What's up, it's Endymion, and there's been some very weird revelations concerning Disney and the company's image at large, and how companies and creators push ideas that unravel and worsen IPs while demanding others bend the knee or else. You'll see what I mean as we go along. And we'll also get into Gina Carano's lawsuit, which the more you look into it, the crazier it gets. Seriously, Disney does not want this case to go forward, or their dirty laundry will be aired for all to see. Firstly, let's talk Star Wars. Disney has confirmed that their next major movie in the franchise is Episode 10, which had the working title New Jedi Order. Apparently now, according to rumors, the official name will be Star Wars Episode 10: A New Beginning. It's clear that Disney has no intentions of rebooting the franchise and are instead completely all in on ensuring their Force is Female future remains. We've been seeing the building blocks gather from various shows like The Mandalorian, where Mando isn't even the main character come Season 3. Book of Boba Fett just emasculated and made Boba Fett a worse character once it was all said and done. And of course, stuff like The Acolyte, which is currently setting the entire internet on fire with every passing episode for all the wrong reasons. Male characters are ruined and female characters are uplifted. It's a very obvious agenda going forward. Especially within The Acolytes, where the show is so full of female characters, you'd have to be stupid to not believe it was not being done deliberately. Even in terms of gaming, the next Star Wars game is Outlaws, which of course stars another female-led character. Yet funnily enough, the only projects that have actually done well and generated any sort of goodwill with the fanbase since Disney bought the IP have pretty much only been the first two seasons of Mandalorian and the Jedi games which both star actual strong male characters in leading roles. And I guess too, the Star Wars Battlefront games because, well, people like shooting each other, I guess. Kathleen Kennedy, of course, is frustrated by this because it proves her wrong that fans want more female characters in their galaxy far, far away. Instead, what fans want are strong male leads who aren't weak morons that get sidelined constantly. And of course, in Mando's case at least, Kathleen Kennedy used her power to ensure that Bo-Katan basically hijacked that show and drove the entire series into the ground. Now, nobody cares about a potential Season 4 of Mandalorian. I couldn't care less about seeing yet another Star Wars or Disney project in general starring another woman in a leading role. They're just doing it across everything. Their animated films, Marvel, Star Wars, and so on. It's so obvious what their agenda is, and I'm sick of all of it. The Acolyte, however, might actually be the most successful show in Disney's Star Wars history. But that's simply because the show is uniting fans unlike anything before it to push back against Disney and tell them to screw themselves. Like Alan Ng of Film Threats said when he theorized the Acolyte will surpass The Last Jedi in terms of backlash, and he may just be right. Because that's what this feels like. To put it into video game terms, if The Last Jedi was Star Wars' Gamergate, The Acolyte is Gamergate 2. Except this time, the community is far more unified, organized, and aware of the agendas of these companies compared to seven years ago when Last Jedi first released. Nothing has really been the same since. It was a true watershed moment, and I think with this episode 10 allegedly being called a new beginning, it's proof that the powers that be at Disney are going full steam ahead with their garbage vision despite the criticisms. Kathleen Kennedy has confirmed this herself when she spoke to multiple news outlets. This statement from Kennedy is going to combine what she said in three different interviews that all cover the same questions. So here's what she said in an IGN, Games Radar, and Entertainment News Weekly interview, and I quote, We're 15 years out from Rise of Skywalker, so we're kind of post-war, post-First Order, and the Jedi are in disarray. And there's a lot of discussion around who are the Jedi, what are they doing, what's the state of the galaxy? and Rey's attempting to rebuild the Jedi Order based on the books, based on what she promised Luke. So that's where we're going. We've been talking a lot about going well into the past, and one of the things that's really knitting this all together, obviously, are the Jedi. What happened with the Jedi over time, much like history? How did the Jedi evolve? They were wiped out with Order 66, then they gradually have been coming back. The question that we're going to ask with New Jedi Order and with Rey is, does the galaxy need them anymore? Do they want them back? So there's a lot of food for thought in what we're doing, whether it's in the past, present, or future. I think what's already great about Star Wars is that it's a big galaxy, and we're coming off what was a major war with the First Order. And now Rey has made a promise to Luke, and that's really the core of where we're going and what this story will be. 
and I think it offers just tremendous opportunity to introduce new characters and start with something fresh. Because we culminated with what George Lucas was creating, and now we take all of that and move it to the next chapter." End quote. Kennedy also confirmed that the ideas being placed within the Acolyte are being deliberately positioned in order to lay the groundwork for what's to come in Episode 10, alongside what they are doing with the James Mangold Dawn of the Jedi movie, which if you ask me, is the worst idea possible for a Disney Star Wars related project yet. The reason being is that this Dawn of the Jedi film will explore the origins of the Force and who the first Jedi were, and you could already bet your sweet butt cheeks the first Jedi will be a lesbian woman because everything Star Wars related has to be the same agenda, ideas, and genders. And like I've said in previous videos already, what these sorts of stories and decisions usually end up doing is they just retroactively end up making previous pieces of media worse in response. By introducing lesbian space witches that can birth life from the Force when neither Palpatine or Plagueis could do it has already created enough tension as is. Not to mention the existence of these Force twins Osha and Mei just ends up making legacy characters like Anakin now less important. Which is sacrilegious if you ask me, because this is the Anakin Skywalker we're talking about, the character this entire franchise owes its relevancy and fame to. Anakin to me is what I consider a god-tier character, someone who is so well-defined and lore-rich you can't really make a character better than him even if you tried. He's up there with other god-tier characters like Spider-Man or Batman, these timeless heroes where they've never been outdone in any way that surpasses the quality of who they are or what they stand for. And that's been one of my biggest problems with Disney in general is how they consistently find ways to ruin the legacy and quality of not only Star Wars, but Anakin as a character. None of these new characters will ever hold a candle to Anakin Skywalker. He is the undisputed legendary icon of Star Wars from now till the end of time. There is no better written character in the past few decades than him. George Lucas making the chosen hero of myth being corrupted into becoming Darth Vader is just... Dude, you can't get better than this. You really can't. There is no better character legacy than Anakin. And that's why it pains me when I see Disney ruining that legacy gradually over time, and in a lot of ways Dave Filoni has become the very Vader that George Lucas worked so hard to not create. Remember that Filoni was in a sense originally the protege of Lucas, he was meant to be the savior and custodian of Star Wars once George was gone. In a lot of ways, George is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Filoni is Anakin, yet instead of getting corrupted and thrown into a pit of lava, Filoni was corrupted by Kathleen Kennedy, who's pretty much Darth Sidious in this story, and the lava is instead a gay rainbow pit of DEI garbage that has turned Filoni into they them Vader pretty much. As this article from That Park Place explains, Dave Filoni reportedly behind creation of Leslie Headland's lesbian witch coven in Star Wars The Acolyte. This all comes from an Entertainment News Weekly interview where Acolyte creator Leslie Headland spoke on how Dave Filoni directly influenced her show's creation. She said, and I quote, Dave Filoni very quickly became kind of a mentor of mine in terms of navigating what this part of the timeline would be like for both the Jedi and then other Force users. It was kind of an aha moment for me when he told me you know not all witches are Night Sisters. I was very inspired by the Night Sisters storyline and the Ventress storyline on the Clone Wars when I was a budding writer. So when I got the chance to make a show set in the Star Wars universe, it felt like, well, of course I'm going to do my version of witches, I just am going to shoot my shot. As the characters developed, it made a lot of sense that they would be at the center of a coven, that the girls would be almost revealed not as children, but as the legacy of what their mother started. The power of one, the power of two, the power of many. In our show, the Jedi have the power of many. I think their mother started as one, and the girls are two, and she wants her legacy to be the power of many. So it was thought of as paying homage to the Clone Wars, but it eventually became the story of a mom and her children and the way that our parents have particular expectations for us. And if Star Wars is anything, it's got a lot of parents and children and living up to or rejecting the legacy of those parents. And when it comes to the creation of the twins, if you keep watching the show, we do talk about that and explore it. I would say there isn't one answer to it. Some characters believe certain things and other characters believe other things in terms of what she means by that. So you're going to have to watch and decide which side of the argument you're on." End quote. As you can see, the idea here is that what May and Osha represent is creating a new age of Force users, something that is beyond that of the Force and concepts like Jedi or Sith. 
they, as in Disney, want to remove the concept of the Jedi Order and go in a different direction entirely in the future. This, of course, circles back to what I was saying when it came to Episode 10 and what Darth Kennedy was also saying. That Rey is looking to rebuild the Jedi Order, but not by making it into what it once was, but instead into something else entirely. But ultimately, whatever they end up calling this new Jedi-like order, people will still refer to it as Jedis because the concept of the Jedi can never really be erased from Star Wars no matter what Disney does. I feel as if The Last Jedi and Acolyte are pretty much the fandom's Order 66 in a way too. We all went into Last Jedi believing that we were in decent enough hands, but we ended up getting sidewindered and any goodwill that was garnered was washed away. That was the fandom's Order 66, then we rebuilt our trust somewhat with things like The Mandalorian Seasons 1 and 2, only to face another exodus with The Acolyte, Mando Season 3, and so on. It seems like every time we build up any goodwill, Disney, like the Sith, always finds a way to burn it all down in an instant. None of this is good, and the fact Disney's upcoming projects range from the origin of the Force to the complete rejection of Lucas's core concepts, it does not fill me with joy, my friends. Especially since the Acolyte has made it very clear that the Jedi in this story are pretty much the villains here, but that's never what George Lucas intended. A user on Twitter named NerdCookies posted an excerpt from an old interview of what George believed the Jedi stood for and meant. And here's what he said. No, they're not like cops who catch murderers, they're warrior monks who keep peace in the universe without resorting to violence. The Trade Federation is in dispute with Naboo, so the Jedi are ambassadors who talk both sides and convince them to resolve their differences and not go to war. If they do have to use violence, they will, but they are diplomats at the highest level. They've got the power to send the whole force of the Republic, which is 100,000 systems. So if you don't behave, they can bring you up in front of the Senate. They'll cut you off at the knees politically. From the mouth of the creator himself, he confirms the Jedi are not bad individuals. They are quite literally the guardians of all living beings who make it their missions to ensure peace is always the number one belief that is honored and protected. Like he said, they're warrior monks. They could kick your ass, no problemo if they have to, which sets their tenets in line with real-life monks or anyone who actually trains in martial arts or any other combat forms. Learning out of fight is never meant to be used as a force upon others to bend them to your will. You learn to fight to protect yourself and those around you. You are not trained to become the sword that cuts down people constantly. Instead, you are the shield between the oppressors and the innocent. That's the whole idea of the Jedi, or real-world monks. If you use your training and your gifts to punish people just because you want to, then you are no better than the oppressors that you stand up against. In a sense, by Lucas's logic, using your talents in a brazen fashion to assert dominance would make you a Sith. But how the Acolyte, Headland, Filoni, and Kennedy, and so on view the Jedi is they are police officers, basically. And since all of these people and many others within Disney and other institutions view police officers as the oppressors because they've been politically told to believe that, they see anyone who keeps the peace and brandishes weapons like Jedi to now be an evil institution. So what we are seeing, friends, is a company with their heads so far up their own asses they think their own crap smells good. And they don't realize they are destroying the very laws and institutions put into place to protect the innocent from the predators in society. A world without police, without law or consequence, is akin to complete chaos. Go look on Twitter or YouTube, you'll find plenty of videos of common criminals that are stealing, looting, and destroying property without remorse. Because the people tasked with upholding these laws are rejecting their own duties in order to seem politically correct. Remember the riots of 2020? How they were a mostly peaceful protest as literal cities burned down? Entire stores were erased, and now these cities and neighborhoods continue to this day picking up the pieces. That was considered a good thing, and in Star Wars' case, this same liberal-esque mentality is being pushed by looking at Jedi like police officers. They are both a trained force of individuals who uphold the law, and that is considered bad in places like California. And breaking laws should be allowed unless, of course, your name is Gina Carano. In case you didn't know, Gina Carano has filed a lawsuit against Disney and Lucasfilm for the termination of her employment when it came to her playing Cara Dune in The Mandalorian. I think a lot of us can agree that Cara Dune was an actual strong female character and what audiences actually wanted. She wasn't stepping on Mando's toes or sidelining him and she was her own character. I love Cara Dune, I still think she's one of the best post-Lucas Star Wars characters to exist. 
So when she got fired, it understandably pissed off a lot of people, myself included. In case you didn't realize by now, I'm a big advocate for free speech. I think you should be able to speak your mind even if others won't agree with you. If some liberal weirdo can say insane stuff whenever they want, I think everyone should be allowed to do so too. Anyways, this comes from The Hollywood Reporter, which is titled Mandalorian Firing Lawsuit, How Gina Carano's Team and Disney Are Battling in Court. So in case you don't know, Gina Carano was fired because she expressed her opinions on Twitter when it came to the lockdowns from COVID and the whole vaccine fiasco. Here's what she said, Most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Yahtzee soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jews. The post continued, How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? Gina was spitting facts here and she was right. We all lived through the lockdowns and it was not a good time for free speech or anything like that. On Twitter, before Elon Musk bought it, you couldn't really say anything without being banned or suspended. Wrong thing was punished constantly, and this was also around the time of the next American presidential election. And anyone who shared right-wing views was considered hateful and was then silenced. And what Gina said ended up getting her terminated. Now four years removed, pretty much Gina Carano's career has understandably taken a massive hit. She's been blacklisted from Hollywood and cannot star in anything with any major studio. She also regularly gets protested against whenever she shows up to fan expo events to meet people. Because her presence at these cons is apparently a form of hate speech. Which is just woke weirdo talk for they don't like Gina because she's not insane and has bright colored hair like they do. And she's an advocate for stuff like physical fitness, which of course weird liberal weirdos are against because being fat is beautiful apparently. I don't know. Everything is upside down these days. Anyway, Gina's lawsuit has been given the okay by a federal judge and will now be allowed to proceed further. So, what's the endgame goal here exactly? On the one hand, Gina, if she wins, could get a massive payout for wrongful termination. She would also gain back her ability to star in things again with major studios. However, Disney is claiming that Gina was not wrongfully terminated and they are allowed to fire anyone who pushes views they don't believe align with their company's values. Which is fair enough, except the gray line here is that what Gina said wasn't hate speech, especially considering Pedro Pascal has openly stated that he hates right-leaning political individuals himself, and he's still obviously gainfully employed. The point here is that Disney is being biased and selective over what they deem hate speech or not. You can attack half of America and say conservatives are terrible and you're fine, but question the status quo or ask any questions you're not supposed to like Gina did and boom, you're gone. It's ridiculous is what it is no matter how you look at it. According to Gina's lawsuit, Disney violated California's labor laws by firing her, stating it's against the law to fire someone for speaking their mind politically. According to Gina's lawyer, what she was fired for was wrongful because none of these opinions or comments were made while she was on set. It was all done after The Mandalorian was already filmed and finished, and again, what Gina said was not hate speech, it was simply political. There's a big difference there. For example, had Gina said straight up she hates insert this kind of person here because of skin color or race, that would be racist, obviously. But stating something political is not hate speech. For example, me saying that Joe Biden looks like a Five Nights at Freddy's robot wearing the skin of an old man is technically political, but it's also not racist. And by the way, Joe Biden totally does look like that. If you gave your opinion on the border control or how votes are allocated during elections, that's also a political statement. But hate speech? No, it's not hate speech to share your opinion about the state of society. That's not how any of this works. Here's one excerpt that explains this well from the article. That may not matter, at least according to Disney. The company claimed that there are broad liberties afforded to private speakers in what viewpoints they choose and don't choose to express. In a case dealing with free speech rights, the Supreme Court held that organizers of a parade had a constitutional right not to include in the event a group seeking to express a message that they didn't want to convey. The organizer's decision to exclude a message it did not like fell within its right as a private speaker to shape its expression by speaking on one subject by remaining silent, the court found. So what they're saying is that what Gina Carano said fell within the acceptable limits of what she is allowed to say when it comes to her position as an employee of Disney. For example, we have other Disney employees like Mark Ruffalo, who has tirelessly been in videos claiming that he hates Donald Trump. What Ruffalo has done is far worse than what Gina has done here. However, he was not fired because his political views align with that of Disney's higher-ups. 
If Ruffalo were to say that he hates Ron DeSantis, for example, Disney would do nothing because they hate him too. But if Ruffalo suddenly said, you know what, I kind of like that Trump guy, he's a good dude, or maybe people should be allowed to question the socio-political climate of the world without fear of termination, Disney would then send the hounds for Ruffalo. It's simply a case of Disney firing and silencing people if they don't say things that they agree with. But Gina Carano's political opinions do not endorse or affect Star Wars because when Gina is in that world, she is Cara Dune. It would be like if a fan said to Disney, I don't want to watch Avengers because Mark Ruffalo is a liberal who hates conservatives. They would say, okay, but when he's in the MCU, he's Bruce Banner, not Mark Ruffalo. His political opinions have no place in the Avengers, so it's fine. You see what I mean? It's rules for thee, but not for me to a T. They simply fired her because she doesn't agree 100% with their agenda. Therefore, given the lawsuit and what it entails, she is absolutely within her right to sue Disney for wrongful termination. Disney, however, counters a lawsuit saying it's within their First Amendment rights to choose which employees they hire or fire depending on how they convey their opinions in the open. Because for Disney being what they are, who they hire for these shows and movies are considered public personas or entities. According to Disney, what Gina said went against their tenets they wish to uphold, which include the respect, integrity, and inclusion of their subscribers and fans. And what Gina was doing didn't properly convey their beliefs, but it's a load of BS pretty much. But the big oopsie Disney may not have realized here is due to this lawsuit going forward, it will now be conditioned via law that Lucasfilm shows all evidence surrounding this firing. Gina Carano said when this all happened that she was being forced by Darth Kennedy into Zoom calls with people who identified as different genders so she could be educated on it. But Gina allegedly refused claiming it was all a humiliation ritual and Kennedy was trying to make an example out of her. The point here is that all of this information, courses, and policies that Lucasfilm has been pushing in private will now be forced into the open. And now we as the public will get a first-hand look thanks to Gina Carano at just how insane Kathleen Kennedy's empire is behind the scenes. And it looks like Disney will have to face Gina in court. I don't think the end result will be Gina being rehired by Disney, however. But I do think Gina Carano will likely get a massive payout and will set herself up for life if things keep proceeding as planned. I fully expect Disney to fight tooth and nail here because if they were to lose, this will be a massive blow for woke companies. But also an incredible win for free speech advocates and fans worldwide. Whether it's Disney continuing to corrupt and ruin their franchises through nonsense and agendas, or firing those they disagree with simply because they don't align 100%, it looks like we're about to see a lot more Disney news in the future, fellas. And this is where the fun begins, my friends. So thank you for watching, subscribe, share, and like the video, and have a wonderful day. Thanks to my patrons, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.